Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a webinar by Pramokumari Silicon Valley. I am Meghna, your host for today. And the topic for today's webinar is Healing Begins When Hurting Ends. And um, just a quick background about myself. I've been associated with Brahma Kumaris for the last six years. And uh, their knowledge and meditation has helped me become a better person, better parent, um, experience a lot of inner joy and serenity. So that is what inspires me to share it with everyone. I feel this is very simple to understand. And when implemented, it has a profound impact. Now, let me just share my screen and then we'll get started with meditation. Two simple tips that has helped me a lot in this meditation. One is wear the hat of experimentation. Think of yourself sitting in a spiritual lab where every thought that I am sending, please accept it that is personally meant for you. Do not create any kind of doubts. This is just an experiment. Accept it. Maintain the faith that this thought that is being created here in this webinar is personally meant for me. So accept it. The second one is see if you can create visuals in your mind as we are saying the thoughts out loud. And whenever we create visuals, the heart activates. Otherwise, the meditation is a very boring and tired uh, tired kind of uh, feeling is arised when we don't activate our heart, heart. It seems very robotic. So whenever the heart gets engaged, emotion starts emerging. It becomes a very powerful experience. And the images, the visuals that we create in meditation activate the heart. They allow it to experience. For example, when we say the word peace, maybe you are imagining a rainbow or a beautiful place where you had visited in the past and the moment those pictures come in your mind the heart starts activating and it starts feeling peace so without any further ado let me share my screen and then we'll get started with the meditation It's time to get some rest for the mind and the body. So for a few minutes, let go of home, work, people, past. Let it all go and let's spend the next few minutes in paying regard to the most precious being I the spirit I am a pure, clean, and a conscient energy. I am eternal and imperishable light. I am the most elevated creation of God. Everything about me is unique, special and angelic. I am an extraordinary being and I've been sent 
to this physical world to perform wonders, magic. I am a talented actor that has been blessed with peace, love and happiness. I am a divine being. Welcome everyone once again to the webinar from Brahma Kumari Silicon Valley. I am Meghna and today we are talking about healing begins when hurting ends. So let's start off by understanding what does healing really mean? You know, what does this word really mean? Because in general, there is negativity in the world. Now, do I want to be affected by that negativity or do I have a different option? What is that option? So just before we start understanding what is hurting, what is healing and everything, let's start off with a positive note, healing. If we search up, what does it mean? It really make, it means something that will make the self sound and healthy. And when is the spirit, the soul, I, the being, when do I feel healthy? We all know that when our heart is full of love, peace, happiness, when we are able to like ourselves, love ourselves, accept ourselves, that's when that healing energy is very active in us because we are feeling emotionally, mentally very healthy. And the power of this healing energy is such that it will even heal the sickness of the body. So when the mind and the heart is healthy, is healed, then automatically we are feeling emotionally very healthy. So healing the self what it really means, it also means that we are investing our time and resources in things, in tasks that empower the self, that is day by day uplifting the self and is causing the self to be very happy. If I am doing investment in all of these three areas, then it means that I'm working towards healing myself, which is nothing but I am working on keeping myself emotionally and mentally very, very healthy. So I would recommend and request you all to keep this definition of healing with you while we go through the webinar. Now, Coming to the other part of the webinar, the title of the webinar is Hurt, right? So when does a feeling of hurt arise in the self? You know, literally it is like darkness, even it might be bright sunny day, but a person who's hurting, it feels like everything is dark because the heart is empty of love. It is really dark. There is no brightness and light of love in it. So it becomes dark and when the heart is dark, the whole life feels very dark. Now, when does the hurt, a feeling of hurt get experienced by us? And I think majority of us have experienced hurt in one form or the other in our lifetime. Some of us may be many small hurts. Some of us may be some big hurts. And some of us may be quite a few hurts. And now this hurt, when it actually comes from our close dear ones, our own family members, that is when it impacts us the most. Why? Because our expectations from our family members are quite high. 
we say at least i would want my family to understand me at least i would want my family to respect me to treat me fairly kindly and yet the reality of life is there are times when people say things which are very very bitter sour bunch of negative words are used and then we create hurt we feel somebody has disregarded us somebody has not treated us fairly and we create a hurt so our expectations from people on how they should treat us on how should they should behave with us causes us to create hurt so when the expectation is met that hey i should be treated like this i should be talked to like this i should be checked upon before doing things when everybody follows my expectations they meet it then i'm happy then i feel love but whenever they don't meet my expectations then i feel hurt now you know each one of us a human being our design is we are one of the most elevated creation and we are business like people we will not do anything till there is some merit in doing it so if we are creating hurt not only creating it but holding on to that hurt for ages maybe the entire lifetime i've heard people say i will die but i will not forgive this person i will never forget what they did to me so why are we holding on to hurt there is certainly some merit in it and what is that merit like i said we are business like people we see what is profitable and what is loss and we are seeing some profit in creating hurt but what happens is many times we don't go and check the profit that i thought i would get from it am i really getting a profit or am i being bankrupt of everything so let's see what are those two merits one is there is a subtle ego a very subtle very very subtle ego that gets satisfied by creating hurt and what is the thought that ego creates i deserve better i should have been treated better because i am very very capable and talented they should have checked with me i am right i can never be wrong the world around me is wrong they don't understand me i am an extremely fair person but others are always unfair to me i am one of the most kindest being and others are unkind to me so this ego that i am better i am right i am fair i am kind and i am very good this gets boosted when i create hurt see how sweet i am and look at the way the world is treating me and here it is possible it is possible that someone really did something unpleasant for me and maybe an entire life i was kind towards them my family member i was always kind always supportive and yet they did something that was very bitter very painful now if i am claiming to be a very kind person then i have only reached the degree of maybe an undergraduate in kindness because i've not been able to be kind to this person this close person who's now become mean to me right so i have to tell my ego hey by the way you're calling yourself extremely kind but you are not really fully kind you have not reached that phd level of kindness because you're not able to show that kindness to this person who's being unkind to you you are only being kind to people who are kind to you till i don't ask my ego these kind of tricky pointed questions 
the ego will grow and the hurt will also grow and ego is very very deceptive it causes lot of harm and we will see how because it's creating this false image it's saying make now you are really kind you're really fair people and the whole world have not been nice to you obviously you should be hurt yes my that image is increasing but what all am i losing we will see one other reason people create hurt is to really emotionally manipulate and control others this is this picture where they will you know moment someone doesn't listen to them they will stop talking to them they will use the creation of hurt to control others so that everyone agrees with them everybody in the house is dancing in their tunes so i mean you know constantly i'm trying to boss others around how can that be beneficial i am not letting people be independent i'm trying to control them i'm always saying my way is the right way everything i have to decide when i take away someone's freedom i can never be free i am the one actually who stayed with all these ropes when i am trying to control others by creating hurt now what are the damages from creating hurt it's very important to understand this i feel this is one of the most important slides because our ego that subtle ego profit we are seeing we will completely say oh my gosh i have been such a fool because one of the most beautiful expression and experience of human kind is love and when a person is hurt has created bunch of negative hate filled thoughts in their hearts that heart has no space for love only one thing can stay stay in the heart at a time we fool ourselves no no that hurt that darkness that hatred is only for this person when on all, all these other people i love them i have love in my heart for them now visualize you know you are you've gone to the past you are remembering this person who hurt you you're lost in that pain you're feeling the bitterness you're reliving that sad moment now suddenly somebody in your family member runs to you and wants to hug you wants to tell you how much they love you can you at that moment accept their love and hug them back with full heart maybe reluctantly we will become great actors yes maybe we will hug them but is the heart experiencing love for them at that moment i can challenge you all that none of us can experience love at that moment where there is hurt love is non existent so if i am creating this hurt the other part of it is i will certainly dump that hurt on someone say i was at work you know bunch of people for no reason they were contradicting me for everything that i said they were it was almost as if they were trying to put me down i took that hurt i created lot of hurt and resentment in my heart and i came back home guess what my child or someone in the family threw something or spilled something or broke something now this child might have done it accidentally and it was a minor loss but that hurt that i created in the office is still active in my heart and where will this hurt be dumped on that family member we will start yelling at them how dumb and foolish are you don't even don't you even know how to hold this thing so if i am holding on to hurt i will certainly offload it to somebody else and typically we hurt the people who were not responsible for it so we end up giving pain to the people who are innocent this is one of the biggest damage and obviously if i'm lost in the bitter past 
how can I appreciate the present? Maybe in my life, I have maybe two people, maybe three people who had hurt me. And in my life, in my present life, maybe I have one individual who fully loves me and maybe even I love them. I am not able to enjoy this one person's love because I'm so consumed by these other people in my past. So it prevents us from enjoying what we have, what is the good thing in the present. It will not allow you to see it. The ego says, hey, but look there. Something bad happened to you. You are such a kind being, such a fair being, unfair thing happened to you. Look at that. And I look at it and I feel, oh my gosh, yeah, that was so bad. So there is constant dark feelings in the heart, you know, resentment, sadness, hopelessness. All of these feelings are filled in my core. Is life meant to be filled with happiness? What do I want from life? And if I am creating only these feelings, am I living or am I in darkness? Many people who are affected by hurt expose themselves to a lot of substance abuse, drinking, drugs, all kinds of addictions arise when the heart is filled with negativity. Because we can't deal, we the human beings are made to experience positivity in our heart. Our default design is that we are comfortable only when there is love, peace and happiness in our heart. And if we fill it instead with this, then we can't stay with ourselves. So we start using the substance abuse where we then suddenly start laughing, singing or whatever we do again to experience some joy. But there are options to experience light in our heart. We don't have to rely to these abuse. And you know, this person or this maybe multiple people hurt us maybe once or twice. But when we are thinking about that bitter past, again and again, day in, day out, aren't we hurting ourselves a lot more by reliving that sad moment? The other person can only do it for a few times, but how many times am I creating hurt? So who is the one that is hurting me the most? You know, this, this creating hurt sustains and grows in us. We become even more expert in creating more and more pain. If we feel that I am not creating pain, people are the one who are giving pain to me. It's literally like, you know, holding with our hands a bunch of thorns, a rod filled with thorns and saying, I am not holding it. These rods are holding me. I am hurting myself. I am creating those thoughts inside of me and I am experiencing the darkness in my heart. Yes, people had to say whatever they did, but I had options. And some people say, you know, when I am holding on to hurt, it prevents me from more, it prevents more hurt from coming. So are we saying that whole life, my entire life, I will remain in pain so that more pain doesn't come my way? Does that even make logically any sense? I will live an entire life in pain so that more pain doesn't come to me. What can be more painful than living a life full of pain, not experiencing love? So if we have these kind of beliefs inside of us, hurt is not going anywhere. Healing is not going to begin. Only hurting will stay and sustain. Some people say letting go is very hard. I can't let go. How can I let go? I did so much for them and this is what they did to me. I will never let it go. It is very hard. And we'll find 10 people who'll agree with us and say, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't let it go. Don't forget. But 
we should ask ourselves are we saying that holding on to hurt is easy we are saying okay letting go is hard but are we saying that having a heart filled with misery pain discomfort that is very easy it's a question we should ask ourselves now many people say you know nobody understood me the world doesn't understand me at least let me understand myself at least let me feel sorry for myself nobody gave me compassion at least i will create self compassion so we need to ask compassion is a form of love and love is the most powerful energy if i am using love for myself then i would have been uplifted empowered and transformed love will not cause you to live a life full of pain resentment hatred this is not compassion when i am crying when i am sad when i am depressed and i am saying this is self compassion i need to ask my ego how is this compassion i am saying whole life i will be sad and i love myself that is why i want to be sad my whole life is this love or are we aggravating our pain we say people should treat me better world should treat me better am i treating myself well by constantly remembering the bitter past am i treating myself well when i'm doing substance abuse am i treating myself well when i am denying the love that is coming my way in the present so is this self compassion or is this self destruction so then what are our options how do we solve this puzzle because it's a reality that each one of us including myself has experienced some or the other bitter or sore interaction with people and sometimes even with our close very close family members that is when it hurts the most right so there is lot of negative energy that is coming our way there's a lot of negative energy so whenever is others are being either mean or sensitive uh, or insensitive or disrespectful visualize that as negative energy coming my way i have three different options to deal with this negative energy one is absorb everything consume it become extremely sad and you know create lot of pain in you and we already saw if i absorb and consume the negative energy that is coming my way and i keep it in in my heart by the way i feel heart is the most sacred place of ours and that is where we are keeping toxins like hurt and pain is that the right thing to do is a question we should ask ourselves but we are in the heart where there should be love happiness excitement we are instead keeping all of this negative energy of bitter past and guess what whatever the heart has it will give it to others so yes we will give pain to people who are innocent our family members maybe they didn't even give us that pain but we end up giving it to them day in day out they have to see my depressed face in fact you can look at the stats number of people who are depressed has gone tremendously up in this last few years just google it up how much is depression on the rise why because i'm absorbing consuming that negative energy and keeping it in my most sacred place my heart is this self compassion question mark reflection my second option somebody gave me something they hit me i hit them back they were very nice to me or they took away something i will also do the exact same thing 
So if you gave me negative energy, obviously, you've been mean to me. I will show you how mean I can be. So I'll copy as if I have no individuality. I have no personality. You are mean to me, I'll be mean to you. If you treat me well, I will treat you well. So we become business like people. In relationship, yeah, if you're nice to me, yes, then I'll be nice. If you're mean to me, oh, don't expect anything good from me. This is one of the top reasons why so many divorces and family breakups are happening. Because nobody has even bit of patience or adjustment immediately. You told me one thing, I will give you 10 things back. You mess with me, I'll show you what it means to mess with me. You know, there is a very uh, insightful story that we are told at Brahma Kumaris. There was a snake and it actually accidentally walked or crawled on a sword, a very sharp sword and it got hurt. It was bleeding. So it went back and attacked the sword again. You did this to me, I will show you. And it went and tried to attack and it got again. So it kept hurting the sword again and again and again. And guess what? The snake died. The snake died. Trying to do exactly what the sword did. So yes, there are some people, either they are having a bad day or maybe they are really negative. What am I doing to myself? Am I taking care of myself by creating poison in my heart? Am I taking care of myself when I, my health is getting ruined? One of the top reasons for high blood pressure is holding resentment, anger, hatred in your heart. I can't experience love for myself, for my family, but I'm ready to radiate this energy. So what am I doing is a question we should all ask ourselves. Third option, this beautiful option that we are taught here at Brahma Kumaris, that there are variety of people in this world. They are going through variety of different situations. It's bound to happen that one day or the other, whether it is my family member, my friend, or anybody in this world might say something that is little bitter. I should be able to protect myself so that that bitterness does not enter my most sacred place, my heart. It doesn't affect my health. It doesn't affect my relationships that matter to me. It doesn't affect my emotional well-being. I need to protect myself. And I'm not trying to create a bad, negative, uh, you know, pessimistic outlook of the world. I'm creating a very realistic outlook that yes, there are beautiful people, but yet there are people who are experiencing a lot of anger, discomfort, hatred. So if I am living in this world, shouldn't I know how I should protect myself? I'm in this field where bitter energy, negative energy is being exchanged between people. So I need to act smart and have a way to protect myself so that this negative energy, before it enters my heart and my mind, it is transformed into something positive. I refuse to store anything negative in my mind so that I have to keep thinking about it again and again or my heart. I have a choice to protect myself. This is real self-compassion where I am protecting myself. Again, ask yourself, what do you want from life? How do you want your heart to be? I don't think anybody will say, I can't wait for my heart to be filled with pain, hatred, resentment, bitterness. Then if I want love and peace, who is going to protect it? Is somebody else going to come and protect my heart, my mind? my feelings, only I can protect, right? So what are our options? What are our options to protect ourselves? So we are given many, many options and I'll share with you a few. I have used 
all of them with lot of success. Reality is, even I had few close relationships that were not very smooth. There were certain issues in it and I have used all of these three methods and how I was able to use these three methods successfully, I will talk about it in the next slide. But these are our three options to transform the energy so that it is really a beautiful butterfly that I'm storing in my heart. At Brahma Kumaris, when I started my journey, I read this particular line, you know, in the knowledge I was reading, that being nice to people who are nice to you is being a human being. Being nice to people who are being, you know, being mean to people who are nice to you, that is being devilish. But being nice to people who are not so nice to you is greatness. And we are not ordinary beings. We tell ourselves, after all, I'm human being. How much will I tolerate? No, we are not ordinary human beings. We are the most elevated creation of God. When we remember that we are this elevated creation, this greatness is part of us and Yes, in the first two years, I struggled a lot with this. I really wanted to practice this. This touched my heart and I failed. But these three options, in time, I've been able to use it successfully. And the result of that success is that relationship has not only healed, we have a very, very great relationship now. So the first option, we are creating compassion for ourselves, right? Saying, oh my gosh, poor Meghna. They treated you so badly. This is not how they should have talked to you. Instead of creating compassion for ourselves, let's look at the other, po other person's point of view. Maybe they were having a very hard day. Maybe, maybe there was something else on their mind. Maybe I hurt them in some way and that is why they said so many bitter things. Anybody who's giving a lot of bitterness to me means what? They are going through a lot of bitterness in their own life. Remember, you cannot give pain to others till you are in pain. You cannot give love to others till you are in love. So this person who came and gave me bitterness, pain, must be going through a lot of pain too. Can I start thinking about them instead of just thinking about myself? This diverts the mind's attention and dissolves the ego, which is always saying, hey, you didn't deserve. Yes, nobody deserves bitterness, but why was this person so bitter? Let me try and understand. In relationships, it's very easy to break. It's very easy to break, but at least I am coming from a country called India, where no matter what, this was the philosophy. Once you're married, you're married for life. Option to break is not even there. That was the culture when I grew up. Yes, obviously when there's physical abuse, there's extreme things, then yes, separation is needed. But for small, small things, hey, you didn't tell me I love you 10 times a day, I am hurt. You didn't ask me and you said yes to this party. I am hurt. Why did you yell at me today? I am hurt. Maybe they had a tough day in the office. Can I be understanding? Or am I ready? Is only my ego the most important thing or is belonging to family also important? Everything is about my respect or also how do I adjust and make sure that family still blossoms? Second option, do a self-reflection. Why are their words hurting me so much? Why am I taking it so seriously? If I thought whatever I did was perfect, it was spectacular then they said it, okay, their opinion. I can check their opinion and reevaluate my work. Was it all all right? 
if I find some mistake, let me be honest. Okay, great. They told me. This is how I will improve. But how do we start talking? Oh my gosh, everything, everything I did well, just this one small thing. They are so critical of me. Oh, well, thank you so much. This one small thing also, why should there be any imperfection in me? I can talk to myself like this instead of being so sensitive. And if in my evaluation of my own work, everything seems perfect, I then should have the courage with a lot of respect. I can go and speak up and ask them, hey, you know, your feedback is very valuable to me. Can you please explain what went wrong? Because I'm not able to understand it. I feel everything went right. But obviously I'm missing something. So indeed there is some lack of respect, some lack of self-appreciation that I'm wanting other people's appreciation. And the moment I don't get it, I get critical. And I have this superiority complex that everything of mine is perfect. Nobody should point anything at me. Why not? Life is all about learning and growing. Without feedback, how will we grow? So this is the second option. Third option, ownership. This is a huge one, requires a lot of courage. But for me, this has worked beautifully and powerfully in many, many relationships. Well, I shouldn't say many, many, but few relationships. This is the understanding of law of karma. We are all souls. We've met our family members before in the past in a different costume. And we exchanged energy. And if that energy was exchanged in a negative manner and our connection ended there, now new costume, new body, we are now back in relationship. And yes, a human soul does not remember anything about the past. But the moment we see each other, there's a recollection, there is an understanding. There's something that is negative that is being exchanged. So when somebody is saying bitter words to us, one more option, if you believe in it, if you believe in karma, that the energy that I sent at one point of time, either in this birth or in my previous birth, is coming back to me. Now, what do I do? Suppose a relative, very close relative of mine is giving me some disrespect or something, right? So the option here to the way to understand is, I was responsible for sending some past negative energy to them, but they are responsible for the present where they are sending me negative energy. So we are in it together. The blame game that they are the ones, they are mean, they are hurtful, they are painful, they are unfair, stops. Because I've taken ownership of the past negative energy and I hold them responsible for the present negative energy. Now, suppose somebody is being extremely rude to me. Law of karma does not say, oh my gosh, take all the bitterness that they're giving you because you gave it to them in the past, now take it, no. First law is to protect my regard and my respect, but not by disrespecting others. So yes, maybe I get up and tell them, hey, it looks like you are not in your best of mood. It looks like you don't want to talk to me right now. We can talk later, but I don't appreciate anybody talking to me like this. And I walk away with a lot of courage, but yet my, dis my respect and elegance remain intact. Why? Because inside I'm not asking any more questions. Oh my gosh, is this the way you behave with others? No, I know. I know why this negative energy came my way. It's the return that is getting settled. So no questions in the mind yet. My present, I will protect my regard. I will even protect my finances if somebody is trying to rob me off. No, oh my gosh, my past, they're robbing me, let, let them rob. No. I will take care, but not with violence inside. 
with an understanding that this past is getting cleared. Now, with peace, what can I do to fix this present? So these three options, you know, they're all very powerful options. Maybe some of you are already trying it in your day-to-day -day life and seeing merits, but if there are few who haven't tried it, I highly recommend it trying it just today because this, whatever we have discussed today is going to be out of our mind tomorrow. It is so quickly evaporates. But if we use the information in our practical life, it stays and becomes part of us and it heals. Knowledge always heals. Truth always gives joy. And this truth that I have used in my life has given me tremendous joy. It has made my heart very warm, full of love. And yes, when we keep walking this path, we all reach our greatness, where even other people's criticism will not change the feeling in the heart one bit. Our respect for them will not go away. Yes, we might speak up to them, but with a lot of respect. So transformation of the energy is in our hand. It's completely up to us, but, but this requires a lot of positivity, a lot of strength, courage, love in our hearts, which we have lost in the journey of life I believe in birth, rebirth, <laughs> multiple births. We've met variety of people. We've experienced hurt. We've given hurt. This heart does not have too much love left in it. This soul does not have enough power in it. All of these options require a lot of love, power, strength. Where do we get it? I was, you know, in the spiritual path. I've been on the spiritual path for about 10 years and I was trying various different kinds of meditations and I was reading different books and six years back I bumped into Brahma Kumaris and the meditation, the meditation that is taught there changed my life for good. My spiritual growth was exponential since I started doing this meditation. And what is this meditation? It is the most simplest meditation anybody could try. And it's our good fortune that a new meditation class is starting today in the evening. Our website has all the details, our really friendly background, <laughs> backstage friends, souls are helping us put all the links there for your easy access to register. So this meditation, the beauty and the power of this meditation is it actually gives us that strength, that love, that power to use those three options I just talked about. You know, there are three energies in this world. Or in fact, you can say there are only two energies in this world. One is the spiritual energy or the soul energy. And the second is the energy of the nature. Matter versus metaphysical soul. Now, we are all souls. We have spiritual energy, you know, love, peace, happiness, purity. All of this is spiritual, emotional energy, whatever you might want to call it. But there is one being in this world, the most beautiful being was just a point of light, the supreme soul who is beyond the cycle of life and death is the one of the highest spiritual energy. And when I, the spirit who's lost the power to forgive, the power to accept others no matter what, who's lost the willpower, the determination. 
when I connect myself in meditation to this supreme being, the divine energy, you know, healing begins. For me, it was such a magical transformation just in few weeks. And within a year or two, those bitter memories, luckily not too many, but whatever few I had, everything not only erased, but there is not even a trace of it left. I mean, I don't have anything about this past in my heart. Why? It is a magic. And this magic has happened in my life. And many people I know have experienced this magic in their life by connecting to the most beautiful being. He is at a very high frequency. Even in the last webinar, it was explained very beautifully. He's radiating love, peace, happiness forever. He's vibrating at a very high frequency. And when I connect to this divine, automatically, this heart starts experiencing love. This heart gets the courage to forgive others. It gets the determination to let go of the bitter past. It gets the wisdom that healing the self is the most beautiful form of love that I can have for myself. That is why God is called love. And when we get connected to him, we become pure love. So let's practice a quick meditation and see if we can connect to the most divine energy. Sorry, one more slide before that. Few more thoughts to leave with. You know, really, when we are creating hurt, it's literally like trapping ourselves in a cage where constantly our heart is being pricked by those emotions. You know, once given a wound is okay, but I am creating, I'm pricking my wound again and again by remembering the bitter past. And really, nobody can free me from this cage this cage of hurt, only I can. And it only will happen when I remember that I'm naturally merciful, loving and a forgiving being. I'm not someone who is hurtful and painful. And bottom line, we are taught at Brahma Kumaris, we are saying, you know, that other person should forgive us, but instead we should ask for forgiveness from our own self. We've hurt ourselves with these thorns for ages. We need to apologize to ourselves, let go of that hurt and be free, really free. So let's practice that meditation for a minute or two. I am a being filled with love, kindness, and forgiveness. And I, the tiny point of light, leave my body from the middle of the forehead and I travel upwards beyond the sky, the moon, the stars, the planet. I reach my physical home, my spiritual home, Nirvana, where the Divine Himself resides. Everything is filled with golden red light. And the moment I enter here, I see two rays of light approaching me like arms, 
trying to hug me. I feel blessed being in the presence of the divine. The rays of love, purity, power from the Supreme Soul is touching me, healing me and rejuvenating me. Every ounce of my existence has blossomed. I am filled with love. I thank God for blessing me, for healing me. And I return back to my body, middle of my forehead. And now I radiate the energy that I absorb outwards. Every being in this webinar is filled with love and kindness. Every being in my city is filled with love and kindness. Every being in our world is filled with love and kindness. Thank you, my dear sweet God, for filling me up with love and giving me an elevated life. With that, we pretty much come to the end of our webinar. Just want to go through some wonderful free events that Brahma Kumari has been hosting. One of them is a 21 day spiritual fitness challenge. It is a platform where we are, you know, giving you all, lending you all our spiritual and emotional support. If you are looking for it, if you want to make your emotional and mental well-being a priority, this is a great event. Uh, we've been talking about anger this week. We've been doing live meditation. Next week, we're going to talk about burden. How do we take Rid, how do we get rid of various different burdens life throws at us? What are the emotional, uh, you know, vitamins to cure it? And then last week, we will, third week, we will talk about conflicts. Wonderful program. Hope you are able to join us. Details are indeed on our website and also on your chat boxes. Then we also have shifting from stressful to peaceful parenting. You know, we have an option to sustain our kids, grow them with a lot of stress and fear. Or we also have an option to raise them with a lot of love and peace. So hope you're able to join us there. We also have living value classes for kids. The time is actually 10.30 to 11.30 every Sunday. Hope you're able to join us. Wonderful stories are shared here with a lot of morals. It's such a fun class. Kids learn things and they don't even realize that they are learning. And a beautiful webinar, you know, continuing our relationships, love. We talked about love today. This will continue next week. Wonderful talk about how do we move from conflict to harmony. It, this webinar is claiming that all relationships can be filled with harmonious feelings. So hope you are able to come and join us next Saturday at noon. And then we, like I just said, we have an online Raj Yoga meditation course starting today. So hope you are able to register, take advantage. Everything is offered for free. So please take advantage. Quickly, 
Brahma Kumaris, it's a world known spiritual organization spread across 130 countries, has been around for about 82, 83 years now. We have millions of people practicing this meditation and our simple motto is world transformation can only happen through your own self-transformation. Each one of us, the members of this organization, are literally working on the self. And while we are seeing improvements in the self, we are wanting to share it with everyone. There is no selfish motive here. Our own transformation inspires us to share it with everyone. And, you know, our center here in Milpitas is led by the most beautiful person inside out, Kusum Didi. She's the director of this center. She has, you know, from childhood onwards been connected to this knowledge and meditation. And she made a very bold step in spite of her family, a little bit of conflict in the beginning. She made a bold step that, no, my life is going to be for godly service. And she came from Mumbai and she's been with us for about 25 years. She's a very wise, mature, and the most practical tips giving sister I have met. Very, very straightforward, very down to earth. Each one of us can connect with her very easily. So we not only get this beautiful meditation and knowledge, we also get a life support who's there to guide us and each one of us if you ask us will say the same thing about uh, our dear Didi. We have many many students attending the spiritual classes which is called the Murli class every day um, and the center right now is closed but it's located in Milpitas. Everything is online. Contributions are graciously accepted, you know, whatever we've shared, whatever we are doing, if you feel inspired by it, if your heart is in it, your contribution is very much appreciated. And Brahma Kumaris is a BKWSO org and uh, you will get tax deduction for it. Every donation of yours is tax deductible. So feel free to use that link to donate. And now for the Q&A session.